Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing Abraham, a man of grit, courage, and faith. We often think of Abraham as a nice old man, the patriarch of faith who heard God's voice to move to a new place and simply moved because he trusted God's voice. But have we considered how much courage, grit, hard work and tenacity it must have taken Abraham to not just move at that advanced age, but to also start a new business, establish new roots, and raise his family the way God commanded him to. Yes, he is often referred to as the father of faith, and that is a precious attribute to emulate. However, we must also study his work ethic and his approach to different projects God gave him. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18 through laziness, the rafters sag, because of idle hands, the house leaks. In fact, one thing to know about faith is that it drives the one who believes to get started in preparation for the word that has gone ahead. Faith is not just confessing and claiming as many of us have reduced it to. Rather, it is a dynamic force that stops us from being passive like we used to be in times past. James chapter 2. In the same way, Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Faith sets us on our feet and ensures that we obey in faith. As it is explained in the New Testament, we prove our faith by our subsequent works. This is why as soon as God promised Abraham a good land that would flourish and be abundant for him and his seed after him, he didn't lay in his hut, hoping that God's word will become a reality when God was ready. Rather, he started giving his best to every work that was before him working hard because he trusted that God would cause all that was around him to flourish. God's covenant and promise is usually not for the faint-hearted or people that are lethargic because, no matter the prophecy of greatness on our lives, there is still a place in a walk of faith for preparation before we see the manifestation of all that has been declared. The instruction of God to Abraham to move to an unknown destination was no doubt very demanding and enough to put one under anyone under a lot of pressure. But thankfully, Abraham was a courageous man with a lot of inner strength. When God says he should move, it meant he had to take everything that belonged to him and set out on a journey that involved moving for days. He didn't even know when or where to stop until God says so. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 10 Amplified says, Now in Haran, the Lord had said to Abram, Go away from your country, and from your relatives, and from your father's house, to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you abundantly, and make your name great, exalted, distinguished. And you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others, and I will bless, do good for, benefit, those who bless you. And I will curse, that is, subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors, has contempt for you. And in you all the families or nations of the earth will be blessed. So Abram departed in faithful obedience, as the Lord had directed him. And Lot, his nephew, left with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions which they had acquired, and the people, servants, which they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem to the great terebinth oak tree of Moreh. Now the Canaanites were in the land at that time. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. So Abram built an altar there to honor the Lord who had appeared to him. Then he moved on from there to the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord in worship through prayer, praise and thanksgiving. 
Then Abram journeyed on, continuing toward the Negev, the south country of Judah. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to live temporarily, for the famine in the land was oppressive and severe. It was a tasking and tiring journey for an old man, yet he kept going because he had the grit necessary to become a father of many nations, and he wasn't scared of the work that would come with moving. It wasn't as if God was trying to punish Abraham, but in this kingdom, God likes to teach us by seeing us get involved in the process. Abraham continued with the journey because God didn't tell him that he had gotten to his final destination. Genesis 13 verses 1 to 6 and 17 to 18 amplified. So Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot his nephew went with him into the Negev, the south country of Judah. Now Abram was extremely rich in livestock and in silver and in gold. He journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, where he had first built an altar. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord in prayer. But Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support him, that is, sustain all their grazing and water needs while they lived near one another, for their possessions were too great for them to stay together. Arise, walk, make a thorough reconnaissance around in the land, through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. Then Abram broke camp and moved his tent, and came and settled by the grove of the great terebinths, oak trees of Mamre, the Amorite, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to honor the Lord. Even at seventy-five years of age, Abraham still went out to fight in a war with his servants. Only a strong man would do that. Another promise came from God after Lot separated himself from Abraham. Naturally, at this point, it would be normal for most people to relax and forget about working. After all, he had more than enough to eat and a house to live in. But he chose to press into the full purpose of God with full steam. Genesis 17 verses 1 to 14 Amplified says, When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk habitually before me with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence, and be blameless and complete in obedience to me. I will establish my covenant, my everlasting promise between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly through your descendants. Then Abram fell on his face in worship, and God spoke with him, saying, As for me, Behold, my covenant is with you, and as a result, you shall be the father of many nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, exalted father, but your name shall be Abraham, father of a multitude. For I will make you the father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, moving from place to place, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession of property, and I will be their God. Further, God said to Abraham, As for you, your part of the agreement, you shall keep and faithfully obey the terms of my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is the sign of my covenant, which you shall keep and faithfully obey, between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be the sign, symbol, memorial, of the covenant between me and you. Every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations, including a servant, whether born in the house or one who is purchased with your money from any foreigner who is not of your descendants. A servant who is born in your house or one who is purchased with your money must be circumcised, and the sign of my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. 
and the male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. First of all, circumcision requires a lot of effort, and secondly, circumcision is painful. However, Abraham started with himself and then proceeded to the same for every other male. Even his dedication and commitment to the prophecy God gave him became obvious in the way Isaac too loved the God of his father, walked in the way of truth, and gave his best to his work. It is for this reason that God's blessing, covenant, and promises were able to move on from Abraham to his son Isaac according to God's purpose. Genesis 18 verses 18 and 19 Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Isaac wasn't taught by his father to sit back after his inheritance of wealth was given, rather he labored to increase the wealth and to also carve a niche for himself in history. Genesis chapter 26, Amplified says, Now there was a famine in the land of Canaan, besides the previous famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. So Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech king of the Philistines. The Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land of which I will tell you. Live temporarily as a resident in this land, and I will be with you and will bless and favor you. For I will give all these lands to you and to your descendants, and I will establish and carry out the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heavens, and will give to your descendants all these lands. And by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because Abraham listened to and obeyed my voice and consistently kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. Then Isaac planted seed in that land as a farmer and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord blessed and favored him. And the man Isaac became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and extremely distinguished. He owned flocks and herds and a great household with a number of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines stopped up by filling them with dirt. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from here, because you are far too powerful for us. So Isaac left that region and camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Now Isaac again dug and reopened the wells of water which had been dug in the days of Abraham his father, because the Philistines had filled them up with dirt after the death of Abraham, and he gave the wells the same names that his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of flowing spring water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So Isaac named the well Isaac, quarreling because they quarreled with him. Then his servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So Isaac named it Sitna, enmity. He moved away from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over that one. So he named it Rehoboth, broad places, saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be prosperous in the land. Then he went up from there to Beersheba. The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham your father. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless and favor you, and multiply your descendants, for the sake of my servant Abraham. So Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord in prayer. He pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, his close friend and confidential adviser, and Phicol, the commander of his army. Isaac said to them, Why have you people come to me, since you hate me and have sent me away from you? They said, We see clearly that the Lord has been with you. So he said, There should now be an oath between us, with a curse for the one who breaks it, that is, between you and us, and let us make a covenant, binding agreement, 
solemn promise with you that you will not harm us, just as we have not touched you and have done nothing but good to you and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed and favored of the Lord. Then Isaac held a formal banquet, covenant feast for them, and they ate and drank. They got up early in the morning and swore oaths pledging to do nothing but good to each other. And Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. Now on the same day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug, saying, We have found water. Against all odds, he kept digging wells till he became successful, even when the people in that area kept covering the wells to ensure that they frustrated his work. But the goal he was aiming at became the driving force that propelled him to continue digging despite the challenges he was confronted with. Just like his father Abraham, Isaac was a man of grit, courage, and faith. Let us pray. Father, thank you for all of your investment into me by your word. Thank you for developing in me faith, courage, and tenacity just like Abraham. And thank you because I know you will give me the grace to teach my children these ways also so that your blessings will continue in my generation. In Jesus' name, Amen.